Welcome back, and what a hell of a weekend it was. The PTR was flooded with people trying to find out what Mop Remix is, what it plays like, what things they can get when it goes live, and now we pretty much know all that. It's honestly kind of more insane than we thought, so today in this video, you're gonna learn all about it. We'll kick it off with moving. You can drag and ride. So this is very much not Mop Classic or anything close to it. This is Mop just played inside Dragonflight, just with your Time Runner character being locked there and a dozen other or so insane twists we'll get into. All of that is extremely obvious when you do the pretty cool intro to this with the infinite Dragonflight that is definitely not teasing any massive lore implications, and then you just start dragon riding around. You get your talents every level, playing Demon Hunter or Evoker or an Allied Race or whatever floats your boat, all with Dragonflight's UI and visual and engine updates, and honestly, it all feels pretty damn good, just like our sponsor. It's a tool I use all the time for convenience, security, and to save some money, nordvpn.com forward slash Warcraft. If you go there, if you click my link, you'll get four months for free in a two-year plan, and that, of course, is backed by their zero-risk 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, you probably know Nord from their VPN. They're actually also a suite of security and convenience tools. The core VPN itself, of course, lets you use the internet as if you're anywhere. You can bypass regional restrictions and content, access streaming libraries of other countries, and even save money by region hopping for a better deal, which uh, for me is now just a part of my holiday planning ritual like the two times I was over in the States last year. And hey, say if your phone is connected to a local network and some traffic is blocked, just swipe over to the Nord app, turn it on, and boom, your restrictions are gone. They have apps on every major platform, they're super easy to use, and they're more than a VPN. You get the dark web monitor, which alerts you if your credentials appear in a data leak so you can change your passwords and be proactive in your security. You You've got their threat protection suite of tools as well, and they've got more things up their sleeve like their password manager NordPass that helps you be secure. And come on, forgetting passwords is just not something we should have to deal with in the modern day. So if all this stuff sounds interesting to you, check out nordvpn.com forward slash Warcraft. The link's just down below for you to click, and there you'll get four months off a two-year plan backed by their 30-day money-back guarantee. Cheers, Nord. With that said, Let's go. This is not chromey time. With the experimental gearing and the gem mechanics, this doesn't even feel close to chromey time. This is more like peering into an alternative universe and seeing a crazy, unrecognizable almost version of WoW. Blood Death Knights using Blink, Paladins with access to Vanish, slotting your helm with a new spell that drops your party's HP to one but shields them instead, uh, and doing whatever the hell this thing is. Pretty cool. Or just going and pulling a full quest worth of mobs and watching them pop like balloons because of your well-planned, not just character build, but gem build, because they really are that impactful. Another thing, you can level in raids. Seriously, one of the fastest ways to level up in Mop Remix is just to queue for LFR while you're playing. Uh, bosses drop extra XP that ends up being upwards of half a level, and with the speed that some LFR bosses go down, it's basically power leveling with a queue time. Pretty crazy. Just as our next thing is, you can't get jewelry. Yes, rings, necks, trinkets, they're not really a thing. At least initially, because they are rewards for basically end game achievements, but otherwise, those items just don't drop. So yeah, gearing feels very different, wildly different in this game mode. It'll take a while to get used to, but the game is still flooding you with minor upgrades, and it just lets you destroy your old gear for bronze. Uh, more on what bronze is later, but basically, it feels really nice to just level up and progress. Filling in those slots just, well, it feels damn good. The actual gearing flow as you level up feels great in this incarnation of WoW. And all that's not even talking about the Cloak of Infinite Potential, which is aptly named. You pick this thing up from the intro quest, and then every mob and quest reward box in this mode can permanently upgrade it with these things called threads, with main stat, stamina, any secondary or tertiary stat, and especially bonus XP gain. So you can have tons of bonus XP, tons of move speed, leech, bunch of extra damage stats, and it's shared, in part, across all of your alts. Basically, just keep playing, and that thing will just get more and more powerful. Leveling, I know a lot of you are excited to get loads of alts up, and man, you're gonna be able to. You can power level fast. We haven't had enough time to fully test this in PTR, but the higher level you are, the more cloak threads drop. 
way more. Like, one stat or XP percent per thread turned into, like, three at 30, then seven at 50. In, like, two hours uh, since hitting 30, this character's XP bonus went from 30-ish to 60-ish. Also, like you just saw, bosses and enemies get obliterated, so it's already pretty fast, with XP doubled, or god forbid, tripled, or quadrupled, um, and of course, you can dragon ride. So, yeah, 10 to 70 will eventually be a few hours tops. The next thing then, have you ever wanted a Mog, a Mount, or a toy from Pandaria, but you were just never really bothered to farm it? Or never lucky enough for the drop? Well, now's your chance. So with bronze, the currency that literally everything you do gives you, you can just buy them outright at the infinite vendors. And those are vendors that you can teleport to with vouchers that you have uh, easy access to. It almost feels like an official Blizzard private server. Uh, so if you want the Elgalon mount, farm bronze. The Shav Anger mount, farm bronze. Or, you know, farm them up normally, get bronze, and if you don't get lucky enough to get the thing you want, well, just buy it with the bronze that you get from farming all the things you want. Now, I talked about rare mounts and that sort of thing, but you can also spend bronze and new stuff. Now, I will warn you, some of these more rare things, like, say, the Shav Anger mount or the Elgalon mount, they are actually fairly expensive in bronze, but I do think that that makes sense given how these are pretty damn rare mounts themselves. And it's not just old mounts and old bits of gear. There are also recolors that you can buy with bronze. So a huge list of recolored gear that was never accessible to players. Things like the Shadow Pan set, but in its proper coloration. And uh, finally, a golden version of the Astral Cloud Serpent from Elgalon. Uh, that one, though, is not for bronze. That is from doing an achievement. And speaking of new old things and achievements, you can pick up Chen Storm Stout's genuinely iconic hat, either for your head or for your back, a lovely touch, and his keg from doing some remix achievements. Uh, these are from finishing the Krasarang Wilds and Kunlai Summit. Uh, but what does that actually mean? That's where things are a little bit different because Finish basically means pick your type of content and uh, just do all of it. So, do you like questing? Then complete the campaign. And bam, zone done. Do you hate questing? If so, that's actually okay. Explore the zone and kill a bunch of rares. That will unlock the achievement for you. Do you want to play group content well? Then do all the dungeons and scenarios, or if applicable, say raids in a zone. And that can be considered done for these big new meta achievements. Sometimes you'll need to do two in a zone to finish it for the rewards, but basically this is very much a have it your way approach. So for many of you who already have lore mass or maybe just don't want to do group content, I mean, you're going to be very well served here. Here's an example. If you want that golden astral serpent, you need to finish Veil of Eternal Blossoms. But that basically just means finishing two of these four achievements. Exalted with the Golden Lotus, Exalted with the August Celestials, Explore and Kill Rares, or Do the Veil Instances. That's, of course, Mogajan Paul's Terrace of the Endless Springs, and for some reason also, the Scarlet and Skullamance dungeons which is bizarre. Still though, there's a freedom in this that I think is pretty great. Now, speaking of achievements, here's a neat quirk. If you're an achievement hunter, clear your schedule because, well, there's an achievement for just about everything in Mists of Pandaria in this mode. Clearing scenarios, raids, rares, dungeons, across all difficulties, doing reps, doing campaigns, everything. And when you do an achievement, you get a stack of bronze, from 200 bronze for a minor bronze cache, up to getting a thousand bronze from the greater bronze cache. So yes, finally, instead of achievements just giving you random points, you actually get something that's useful that you can spend. And it's even better than that because all of the achievements that have a real counterpart, those are also triggered by doing the remix version. So if you want to go and get Lore Master or Exalted with those reputations, if you do them in remix, well, it, it will be there on live as well. So you won't have to go and do, say, uh, Golden Lotus Exalted twice if you do it once in remix. You'll get the achievement on regular non-remix as well. And speaking of those reps, by the way, they'll be pretty easy. Uh, just like with time walking, this has bonus reps. So far, we found out that the Order of the Cloud Serpent has a 100% bonus attached. Others are likely the same. And 
There are new Aid the uh, repeatable turn-in quests for every faction, asking for 10 of the farmable lesser charms of good fortune currency um, that are, you know, from, say, like, Timeless Isles, mobs, and things like that. So, yeah, you could go do your regular dailies, or you could just get a whole bunch of charms from doing literally anything else and turn those charms into rep. So, again, that theme of there being a lot of freedom and things being pretty damn generous with progress, that's absolutely running through here. You can look pretty great. Transmog is free in this mode. Nothing costs gold at all. So if you just want to play dress up, this is definitely the place. Now, you can also look great by getting these class sets. These are for finishing Landfall and Isle of Thunder. And yes, if you're keen-eyed, you might have noticed, these are recolors of last year's gorgeous class sets. Basically, if you get the achievements on one character, then you get the stuff for that character's class. But it also unlocks for you the ability to purchase armor and weapons for every other class using bronze. I don't even want to think about the amount of uh, tender value that all of this would have been if it was actually on the store. Overall though, pretty damn neat. And our final thing today, the PTR was packed, and when this goes live, you're absolutely going to see Pandaria flooded with people like it's 2012 again. If you've ever wanted to experience Mists of Pandaria, uh, obviously not exactly as it was, but like an actual big MMO experience with loads of players and the world being just vibrant and packed, this absolutely will be a time to do it. Between how honestly fun a bunch of this stuff ends up being, because in a way it really is like Season of... Di it's like Season of Discovery, Mists of Pandaria, but... Um, I, I don't know, like super fast uh, on hopped up in many different substances mode. That's that's essentially the feeling here. This is World of Warcraft, essentially n like you've never played it before. At least here, I thought I'd kind of bring you a, a bunch of interesting findings and things that uh, I just thought you'd like to know. And I've got to say, I think I'll be spending quite a bit more time in this than I would have assumed from their PvE thing. I mean, even back when I thought it might have been that Vampire Survivors mode. Because uh, yeah, as much as that would be cool, this is Mists of Pandaria, an expansion that I love. I can go do Heroic Throne of Thunder, but with a totally busted level 70 version of class that I'm kind of familiar with, with, but with a whole bunch of twists to make it different. Oh man. Yeah, they're cooking. They're cooking, and uh, so are we. So come back tomorrow. That's it for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time.